Hi Taurus. Last but certainly not least for the June readings. I know you guys feel like you've been a little bit ignored. I know you guys feel like I forgot about you. None of that is true. Um, it just wasn't your turn yet. And I feel like that's something that you're really having to learn right now. Um, especially because having Chiron in your 12th house, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out of the woodwork that you're really learning that was hidden before. Enemies, you know, because the 12th house is all about your shadow side. It's about the things that you don't necessarily show people on a regular basis. It's not, it's about, um... All of the things that you're not a, maybe even 100% honest with yourself about. Um, Venus is moving out of your sign and moving into Gemini on the 8th of June. So then all of the planets have moved through your sign and you're feeling a little bit alone. Feeling a little bit lost and a little bit alone. But that's just it. It's just a feeling. It's not actually true. And even though things are starting to slow down a little bit and that high of your season is gone, that doesn't mean that the momentum has to slow down. I feel like you think that it does. I feel like you think that all of a sudden everything halts, comes to a stop, right? But again, I feel like there's so much growth and so much capacity moving forward. Everything, um, the momentum can continue to push forward. I think that you're just a little bit hesitant now because it's not your season anymore and all of a sudden you feel invisible, right? So we have the Knight of Pentacles and the Empress. The Empress is actually ruled by Venus, so we're going to say that's you. Even if you're a male and you're watching this, you can still have Empress energy. Don't get your panties in a bundle, in a bunch. Um, you are succeeding in ways and growing in ways that I'm not entirely sure you're recognizing right now. And the reason why I feel like you're not recognizing it is because if you're not getting the attention from the outside world for them to recognize it, you think that it's not being seen. But very much like what I just told Aries in their reading, you have to see it for yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to allow yourself to trust that your healing and your growth and your awakening and everything that's coming to you is not because somebody else is paying attention to you. It's not just because the sun was in your sign for a month. It's all of that beautiful energy of growth and movement forward and being seen. Because remember, your May reading was all eyes on you. And now that all eyes aren't on you anymore, you feel quite alone. But you're not, because you're still being seen. But are you seeing yourself, Hierophant? Are you seeing yourself, or are you just waiting for others to see you? You know what I mean? And I'm not throwing shade at you. I love you guys. You know that I love you guys. I just don't want you to get caught in a cycle of I will only be loved if I'm shown, I'm only lovable if I'm shown the love, right? It's like in Jerry Maguire where he's like, show me the money kind of thing. Just by saying that doesn't mean that he's going to have it. It's an energy. It's an energy. The Knight of Wands and the Lover. So you could be dealing with a Gemini energy or... A fire sign or you know just yourself it could be a really strong relationship a really close connection that you have and if this does have to do with a really close connection you want this person to see you as well but the question here is are you seeing yourself in the way that you want this person to see you you know 
Um, the Knight of Wands makes me wonder what decision you're making. What are you going back and forth on? What can you not settle down on? What is it that you're trying to figure out? You can't just quite, you can't get it, like you can't wrap your mind around it. Let's see. What is this Knight of Pentacles? Knight of Pentacles. Ooh. I feel like the strength, you think the strength is in the blunt force, if you will. Um, the really fast movement of Gemini season is coming in. That can help push you forward. That can help get you unstuck. That can help really move you forward with the way the mutable season goes. But how comfortable you are you with that? I don't know how comfortable a Taurus can be being shoved through energy. So this month is really all about allowing yourself to stay at your own pace. Because I, I feel like the more you accept that you are being seen and you don't have to have the attention to be seen, I know that sounds a little bit oxymoronic, but you don't have to have the attention to be seen, you can recognize all on your own how strong you are and that you're being supported by the universe in a million different ways, right? Judgment on the Empress. Who is the Empress? The Empress is somebody that can basically do anything without breaking a sweat. And why? Why can she do anything without breaking a sweat? Because she takes care of herself. She knows her value. She knows her worth. She understands that the universe is supporting her. She doesn't get into a mindset of, well, that didn't work out. I guess nothing's going to work out. Let's see what the Six of Wands is. Because I feel like the effort here, yeah, you are actually being seen by people. And I think a lot of it, just because it's not like forcefully, like it's not out there, you know? Lemon honey water. It does wonders. Um... The King of Wands on the Six of Wands. There are people that see you. And I think your confidence, it doesn't have to rely on you knowing that these people see you. Like, I don't have to tell you that. But right now, that's what you feel like. The standards that you really put on yourself, Taurus, um, can make your expectations of who you are so incredibly big that you forget how amazing of a person you are because you expect so much from yourself. This is even a Virgo saying that to you. Um, a little bit of business that I did not say at the beginning. Um, I'm trying something new where like normally I do pop-up live questions. Like, I'll do a live and I'll do like $30 for a question, and we and I answer it live. I'm trying that, um, offering one question readings on my website that you get as a video. So if you're interested in doing that, um, go check out my website. I don't know why I felt like I needed to throw that in right in the middle, but for some reason, there it is. Um, I also have other readings available, one-on-one -on -one alignment sessions. I feel like some of you might need a one-on-one -on -one alignment session, honestly, because I feel like you're blocking yourself from some kind of abundance, and it's strictly only because you're not seeing what that is. You're not seeing how to process how your, your movement forward. Like, everything that you really need to happen and to move forward, yeah, see... Every time something really, really good happens to you, if you get lost in the fact that something really, really good happens to you, then you're sitting there wondering, okay, well, when is the bad thing going to happen? 
Maybe there isn't a bad thing that happens. But they're in that lack mentality. I think that's why you question yourself. I think that's what this Knight of Wands is. The reason why you question yourself constantly is because you're constantly waiting for the bad thing to happen on top of the good thing. Instead, like do what I did growing up. Whenever something bad would happen to me, I would say, there's always something good that happens after something bad happens. And the reason why bad things, quote unquote, bad things would happen is because I was learning a lesson or it's because I um, needed to clear something out of my life. Maybe at the time I wasn't seeing that or believing that, but looking back, I know what the difference is now. Not all bad things are going to follow up on a good thing. You don't have to worry about the good thing coming and then all the bad fault making it fall apart. There's some kind of skeptical part of how you're living right now that makes you believe nothing good can come of this. And I want to ask you to have a little bit of patience, especially when if it comes to a relationship. Um, it could be that there's a Gemini. I think that you're really confused about this relationship, honestly, this connection. And maybe you thought this connection was one thing, and then you thought, nope, it can't be that. And now you're kind of going back again and thinking, oh, maybe that, maybe it was that to begin with. But it's so confusing. Instead of going through the loop in your mind over and over and over again, somebody just started the weed eater outside, so that's going to be annoying. Um, instead of making that loop happen in your head over and over and over again, what I want you to do is allow yourself to just let it be. Let it exist. Whatever the connection was, whether it was for the good or for the bad, just let it exist. And some people are like, but Betsy, I still feel the person. I still think about the person no matter what I do to distract myself. Well, that's your first problem. Don't distract yourself. There's no distractions when it comes to connections with other people. There's nothing that you can distract yourself into healing it away, right? You can't distract away the healing vibes. What you can do is be honest about it with yourself. And you can say, all right, so I'm confused. Seven of Cups. But if I allow myself to see the good side of things, Four of Swords, the Fool, and the Sun. The Sun is the happiest card in the deck. Best card you can get. Best outcome ever. But you got to see it. Whether that connection was real, whether it was an illusion, doesn't matter. What did you learn from it? How did it help you grow? How did it help you become a better person? How did it help you recognize your true soul purpose? Because that's usually what a lover's relationship will do. Lover's type of connection relationship will do. Now, if this doesn't have to do with a relationship and it has to do with a Gemini, or it has to do with a decision you need to make in your life. Make sure you're keeping yourself open to possibilities. Oof. I was wondering if that was going to show. Seven of Wands, Knight of Cups, Justice, and the Hermit. So it could be with a Libra or a Virgo. Um, I don't want you to close yourself off from the possibility that there was something there or is something coming in. Because of the struggle of the past, because of this, the deceit of the past, I think there's a fear. I think you're afraid to hear from somebody. I think you're afraid to message somebody. I think you're afraid to approach somebody or somebody's going to approach you. But when you close yourself off, then nobody can come in. Nobody can show up, right? 
So whether this has to do with a Libra or a Virgo or a Sagittarius or a Gemini or another Taurus, there's balance in this and you can always retreat. But when you retreat, make sure you're not doing it in a woe is me kind of state of mind. Make sure you're doing the retreat and allowing yourself to heal while you're doing it. Because what does the hermit do? The hermit goes to the top of the mountain by themselves, gets the information from source, brings it back down to the people, and shares it. Right? So closing yourself off to love or to acceptance that's the thing is I want you to see the beauty and the healing aspect of whatever it was that Chiron is now trying to show you because I feel like it was sort of hidden. It's sort of hidden, right? And and if it is to come to light, and you that's a risk you're going to have to take because you're going to be like, do I really want to heal from this? Do I really want to know what it was that I'm hiding from myself and everybody else? I mean, you're going to be shown that anyways. So why not just let it be known? Why not let it be shown right now? Yeah? My point is, is you're not invisible. You are being seen. And you're being seen by the right people, but... I want you to see yourself, too, because even if somebody else isn't giving up on you, you can't give up on yourself. Even if somebody else says they're not going to give up on you, you can't give up on yourself. You can't hold on to other people's promises. Even if those people are being real about it, you can't hold on to it. Because the only person that you have to live with every single day is you. Right? All right, my lovely bulls. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your patience with this reading. And if you would like to get a reading with me, personal reading with me, uh, check out my website, fearlessintuition.net. Um, also, if you want to sign up to find out the events that I will be um, doing this summer, I will be in the Midwest in June and July. So I'll be doing St. Louis and Chicago and Omaha and Kansas City in June and July. And then I'll be going out West for August. So we'll be doing Vegas and LA and San Francisco and Portland. Um, so if you want to get updates on that, my website, sign up for the email subscription. I love you guys. We'll see each other soon. Bye.